Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. course the overlay is not completely okay because we're missing a guest but I will fix it on the fly uh, hi guys welcome to episode 14 of war room uh, glad to be here and talk to everybody we're missing Siri I think he's just doing some post-match stuff with SJR but it's been 20 minutes so we're gonna get started uh, let's go around and introduce ourselves uh, starting with the person we have filling in for Siri currently mr. Queenblade hey all that really all you're gonna do what? I'm here. Hi, guys. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. That's Queen Blade of 228, everybody. G Man, why don't you go next? Hey, G Man 129 from Credit. Just, you know, all around badass. <laughs> Sorry, I was just making sure that I gave Heim Delight two cameras, apparently. <laughs> More Heim uh, is always the way to go. It's too, too many. Trent in there. There we go. There we go. Now everybody's face is up except for, you know, Siri. All right, killer. So, Trent, take it, take it away. Introduce yourself, man. Uh, Sir Trent Howell, Knight Colonel, Blackstone Knights. And welcome back. And Heim Delight, of course, second appearance on the show. Good to have you. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, Heim Delight from Astraeus Titans. And once again, bearded, my bearded friend. How's it going? Uh, good. It's good to be back. Uh, now, Sace of Sig. That's right. Y do you like the, uh... Can you see the artwork I gave you guys? I cannot. I'm not looking at it right now. It's just Internet's too bad. It's just a cigarette butt. Don't worry. Hey, I'm okay with that. <laughs> User joined your channel. Oh, oh! Siri-ton! So. Oh, Siri's here! Nice. Okay, well, uh, everybody, you should all talk really quickly while I reset the overlay. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? There's a lot of matches going tonight. I am impressed with it. It's making me work very diligently with Merrick. Oh, that's right. Queenblade is doing a whole, like... Um, yeah, t well, actually, Queenblade, why don't you tell us about that quick? Uh, I came up with an idea uh, last season where I kept the stats, tracked them all for a unit, and... The unit really enjoyed them. They liked to see where they are, what they did, and everything. And we gave out little awards and whatnot for everybody, at which Dirt Fire is being a derp about right now. And uh, I wanted to expand on that, and I kind of surprised Antonius Rex with a complete league-wide leaderboard and stat tracking uh, Google spreadsheet, which Versinex and uh, Carpenter is diligently helping me with in terms of bringing my idea to fruit, fruit uh, whatever and trying to automate it so I don't have to manually input everything sorry and so the goal of that is just uh, keeping up with game stats correct all stats uh, prioritizing on the pilots themselves um, so I don't know if you even have it or whatnot, but for those that want to look at it, that is it. And essentially on the first sheet on the top part is going to be uh, what we would consider kind of like world records or league records in terms of individualized mech performances spread across uh, match score, kills, assists, and damage. Uh, Paul from PGI was kind enough to give me the formula that calculates match score. So I've modified the formula so that it kind of will is now more based on performance and uh, kind of a battle value, so to speak. So like kills and assists are equal in terms of uh, how many 
how much value they give and uh, damage a little bit more because that's just what MWO emphasizes on right now is uh, damage. And then on the bo bottom half is going to have, like right now, if we take every team and we just times it by 12, there's going to be at least over 300 names. And this one's essentially going to do a overall stat keep and average, and then it's going to break down by each uh, weight class. So we can see, obviously, if someone plays a mix, you know, they, they kind of do like a tr uh, jack of all trades, they'll be pretty much on the overall. Whereas you get those people who like to specialize themselves in different weight classes, they'll be able to see themselves there. And then for uh, sheets after the first sheet, it's going to be every turn. And so you're going to see people's performances on a turn by turn basis as well. And then I have all the units their individual games and their uh, their total. And then obviously in the upper left hand corner their information if people want to find out more about the unit. Uh, maybe they like the people they see, maybe they like the logo, the lore or something, they want to find out more, they want to talk recruitment wise, whatnot. Uh, my biggest vision of this all is to hopefully bring people who don't know about the competitive scene or people who are kind of like wishy-washy on it not sure if they want it. it this gives them something to kind of entertain themselves on and maybe even uh jump into it and become competitive yeah man this is really cool there are so many teams on here like holy shit this is a lot of work Yes, and like I said, it's, uh, it's a big undertaking on my part, and I am thankful that I have Versenix helping me out with the formulas, making it, trying to automize it, or auto, uh, make it automatic. Automated. So that, uh, automated, <laughs> <laughs> so that it's much easier on my part, so I don't have to put everything in by hand. And uh, like I said, uh, uh, Carp, he, from QQ Rage Quit, wanted to do something for uh, Arhod, and then when I brought this to him, he's like, oh, my God, this makes my stuff look like peanuts. And uh, he's all on board with it, too. So we're going to try to bring this also to Arhad. That's really cool. And then, actually, now that you bring that up, it, uh, I should also mention Here. that we have the rating system. Yeah, if I see people talking about the Div OP thing, go to uh, units like uh, Clan Jade Falcon or First Sky Jaegers, you know, some some guys that have some games done already and so they can see a little bit more in oh, terms yeah. of the individual games and how it's moving into the the mid section so you'll be able to like you'll be able to award a you know best pilot in Merrick after this essentially yeah we could if Damn. we want we can name an MVP or just a best of the assault classes best overall you know like I said this this emphasizes more on the pilots themselves rather than the units that's really cool I'm really excited. Well, it's extra cool that uh, PGI gave some help, and finally, it's always nice to see PGI involve themselves with the competitive community here. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm I'm glad that you were able to get that sorted out. Oh man, I'm gonna have so much fun watching these stats, guys. We got to create a uh, a Mech Warrior Fantasy League. You can draft <laughs> pilots for your 12 man. We'll, we'll make it the War Room Fantasy League, and uh, winner gets the smallest MC package. Yes. <laughs> Deal. Oh, you joke. You joke, but as long as I win the draft and get uh, Arara and then a bunch of SJR nah. guys, I feel okay about it. I'm getting See, the thing is that SJR guys are going to be bad for your draft because we all split damage. Oh. Except for Jaeger. He you gets get, tons get, of kills, you get right? Team care. Jaeger just secures all the kills. <laughs> I see and if anything... Say, draft uh, Arara. We'll draft Heim. Wait till we get the trading cards. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Do they come with chewing gum? <laughs> They're actually Bazooka made out of chewing, chewing gum. gum. <laughs> Damn it, now I can think about this fucking 30 Rock episode where they make like the Couch Town That's American Couch commercial. Somebody's asking if everybody can view these uh, stats yes. as they go on. Yeah, yes. uh, this, is, this is viewable by anyone. Um, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm giving this to Raffle to use on the War Room, War Room News. Uh, he's gonna also have this for if he ever does any shout casting for Merrick matches. Which so he I can will. actually bring this up and kind of give like a pre-game thing and talk, you know, and stats and say, you know, in game two, Jaeger 12 usually shows his best performances when he pilots his this mech or something, or this chassis. And then uh, I'm also gonna be giving this to Merkstar, so it'll be available on the website as well. 
Man, this is cool. I'm super excited for this. This is going to be a great tool to be able to look at. Almost um, like a real eSport. I know. It's like we have, we're going to be able to like, track people and shit. Next thing you know, I'll have the spectator cam for my shoutcasts. <clears throat> hint. Ooh. Hint. Hard. In case anybody's watching. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, no, yeah, um, I mean, we'll say. Like I so, said, I did the, uh, I worked on the data API work for PlanetSide 2 that essentially does stat keeping and pushes it to their external website at players.planetside2.com. Anywho, enough about my past. Basically, I wanted to bring that to MechWarrior because right now PGI does not have a data API whatsoever other than the profile pages. And right now we can't access those externally whatsoever. So this is basically like step one into hopefully kind of forcing the ticket on PGI. Cool. And then this is actually probably a pretty good time. I don't know if these are updated when they were last updated. Uh, we last also have morning. the... No, no, no. I was talking about the, the team rankings. Oh, your, your ELO? Okay, that yeah. That Third World does. I, I'm assuming they haven't gotten today's games, but this is current team rankings. Um, I don't think... SJR, you guys should still be ahead of SWK even after tonight, because you're up by like a hundred points. So, I know there was question into whether they wanted to use the trial of position or not, because it's technically considered a preseason of Merrick. Oh, that's interesting. I did not know that. I'll have to talk to uh, Third World and see what he's get, uh, what he's going to do for that. <laughs> I love that Luna is still up there. That makes me happy. Um, Okay, well, uh, we can actually talk about, you know, the stuff we were going to talk about tonight. So basically, the things I want to talk about are, we've got speculation on the new mechs, what, well, possibility of uh, the new mech and what it could be, whether or not it's the Firestarter or the Wolfhound. Um, yeah, don't worry, I know. And then the real thing that I want to talk about is how many of you saw the, the post about the user modifying the user CFG files? Bad PGI. Bad. Yeah. Wait, wait, what? Somebody update me here. Uh, okay, so basically, here, I'll, I'll link you quick. Too long, didn't read version. PGI is okay, the use of con uh, configuring well, so, PGI, so user Siri CGI. and I were talking about this last night during the shoutcast, and this guy is a web developer, right? That's what it says. Uh, PGI Fox, Kyle. I believe he is doing the web development stuff. Yeah. I... So basically, here, I'll read it out loud for those of you that can't see it. Um, although I can understand the feeling of being cheated when someone seems to have a huge advantage. Uh, I have to disagree that the community should be restricted from using these mods until we get something more official in the UI. We generally dislike user dot, uh, CFG changes, but it is part of running any game. I do not consider it negative or in any way a reason to disrespect other players whom are just trying to have fun and change things up to their clients. It's clearly in the spirit of the experience and not a tactic, tactic to raise someone's skill. <coughs> If people are experiencing better frame rates because they do not render the cockpit glass, that's something that we should be looking at. But that's something that I know we are very interested in. Our FPS test, blah, blah, blah. I'm unlocking the thread to keep the conversation going. Basically, you can take out your cockpit. And they're just uh, okay with that. More than just a cockpit. You can take, yeah. out, take out your whole instruments. goddamn mech. Yeah. If the they were a little bit more modifiable uh, in nature, where if you do things like that, you weren't affecting other people who are playing the game, it would be okay, because, you know, in, in other video games, there are mods, and it's usually generally acceptable under certain circumstances, but in, in the circumstance surrounding the decision to allow people to change that, it, it, you know, there's really no, you can't really prove someone's doing it in a competitive match or not, uh, whether, you know, someone would do it, but... I know there's been uh, some suspicion in the last couple days because uh, there's been a, I mean there's been a bunch of matches in the last two days and I know I've heard some talk from a few different people about somebody you know might not have their trees turned on or something like that and it's just I don't know I, I don't well the big one that you can remove files. and actually the TLDR of the announcement was that if it's in the dot CFG you can do it um, and so that's basically the line they've take, taken. Um, big one is that in the .cfg, not just the 
cockpit you can remove. I don't think that's a big deal. But the fog, you can turn fog off. Yeah. And like Caustic Valley, you can see perfectly clearly at two kilometers away. Yeah, like do you guys? Whereas before, you'd struggle at like eight hundred meters to see something. Not only that, but you can take your entire cockpit out. Like, I don't know. It, it strikes me as a huge like not 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 are you just not taking your glass out, but you're taking out all of your instrument panels, all of the like framing, everything. Uh, for those of you that are watching on stream, I've got like a screen cap of it up, but it's just I don't know. It, it strikes me as something that I would like to know how vetted that comment was. Like if he you know checked with a bunch of people and then made that comment, or if it was just like, oh yeah, totally, you're allowed to do that, no big deal. Yeah, here. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find the picture of the the fog removal. I can't find it. Oh, oh sweet team speak trap. Sweet I effects. You. I linked you a gallery there. The bottom one is obviously the default. Oh, yeah. The middle one is with cockpit off and fog still in, and the top one is with both effects turned off. Jeez, it almost makes it look like an alpha build. It does. Like, it, it's ugly, but I mean, I can see that Centurion's outline complete, like... Jesus. Ooh, that's... I mean, I, I wouldn't want to... I guess wanna, that one will come down to the players. Though. First of all, I wouldn't want to play that game, because I think it looks like trash. But, second of all, it's clearly an advantage in a competitive scenario. It's... I don't know. I, no, there's rules in place for the competitive scene about messing with these things, right? Right, but the fact that... Completely unenforceable. Yeah, it's <laughs> exactly, unless it's yeah. a streamer. But the fact that it's allowed by the developers means that... I don't, it, it, where do you draw that line, then? Because as competitive players, we don't want anybody to have an advantage. But if the devs are being like, this isn't you know, a competitive advantage, like, how do we deal with that? Well, know. honestly, devs have not always known best, so... We deal with it as players. How we deal with it, yeah, we I think guess. it's an advantage. We just don't give it to people. I mean, w wish we could police it, and clearly you can't enforce it. But I would hope that everybody involved in the tournaments has the the good graces not to be using these if it's asked not to. Well, actually, on Reddit, uh, Sean Lang seems to be intimating that they are going to be changing some things and locking down the .cfg. It's just not happening right away. I was so just I'm say, hoping they follow through with that. I know that there was plans to add a, a field of view slider. They had mentioned that a really long time ago, that they were just going to add a slider so that you could change your field of view, which I think is a fine idea, as long as everybody is able to change where they want their field of view. No big deal. But uh, stuff like this, where you're just completely changing the feel of the game and the appearance, it, I don't know. Um, Run Hot or Die, if I'm not mistaken, is having a discussion currently about uh, editing the file, and I think the, from what I've read, overwhelming response is they don't want people to be removing fog or um, you know removing their cockpit. Uh, but the F, the field of view thing seems to be generally accepted. Yeah, I don't think field of view really. I mean, you can't use third person anyways, which is the only place it gave you really a huge advantage. Um, and third person is trash, so. But yeah, it's, the, the, pr the problem is that there's no way to enforce it. You can't see it if you're looking through another player's perspective, so how do you make sure that nobody's using it? <laughs> like, yeah. it's you, unenforceable. Uh, you wait for PGI to have another one of those invitational tournaments, and you change the CA C you know, CFG at the LAN, and everyone yells at you? Oh I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. It's just... I don't know. It's rough. I mean, so what do you guys think? Do you think we should just keep the keep the rules the same way they are now and just hope that people follow them? Well, here, let me read the quote from Sean Lang. It's, quote, I would expect changes coming down the pipeline to prevent users from doing any or very limited editing to the user.cfg. Yeah, he also says they're aware of it, I think, in another comment. So yeah. he directly, yeah, acknowledges it, so... And so that, that just kind of feeds into the confusion of, like, what is this guy saying, and why are the IGP GMs giving us different answers, and, well, now Sean's saying that they are going to be changing stuff, so it's it's just the old communication barrier that we've always been running into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I it remember when this like... first came up, we, uh, Sean was kind enough to kind of take 
our message and kind of like hand deliver it to PGI for us as well. Yeah. Does seem also like uh, Kyle this post. He starts out and it sounds like he's talking just his own opinion. But then he talks about we later on, which is confusing. It seems like that was probably unauthorized and it's just somebody talking who probably shouldn't have said something. But that's my take on it. If there was some official thing, it would have been made in a big official post and announcements or or a command chair or wherever, but this is just somebody making a post of his opinion buried in a thread somewhere. And of course I lost it. Damn it. Oh well. Um well, if we want to talk about other information, the clan rewards package. Yeah. Oh. Still not enough. Yeah, it's, that doesn't seem anything useful. In there. I mean, it's just incentive to buy early. It's What's silly though is is if you try to use the do package system and buy them in pieces so you get all of them, you will actually spend more money purchasing them individually or in pieces rather than buying them all up front. That's the point. No. Uh, so the, I think it's a it's a fairly common marketing strategy. Siri, lean to your left. Nope. I think that's Blix your, brought up the That's your right, Siri. I know. God I think it. Blix brought up the uh, a good point to me earlier. At least I think it was Blix was that the there's no December reward. All of these rewards are going forward, so they're not giving a reward to the people who bought it like blindly as a thank you. This is just buy more. Yeah, it's yeah. that that does kind of suck. I will I will admit that that does really suck for those people, but they should have just had this reward system in place from the time they launched it. Personally, I want my coffee mugs for my Phoenix package and my <laughs> legendary if package. It been, package. If it had been like a real life coffee mug, that's what I cool. thought. I read that and I was like, that looks like a pretty. De I was like, oh, that's that's not a real coffee cup. Damn it! I was like, I get a fucking legendary cup. Hell yeah! I'm totally gonna buy a clan pack. Two hundred forty dollar coffee cup. Fuck yes. Totally it worth it. Heats your coffee. <laughs> It better fucking make me coffee with like infused <laughs> with truffle oil or some shit for two hundred and forty dollars. But since it's You're a hard man to please. I mean, not really, but um Personally I'm still excited for clans. I would I'm waiting on the next clan tech information drop, but do we have any idea what Warhorns do yet? No. Nope. God damn it. No, oh wait, somebody said it might be Something similar to the way heavy metal makes a horn. Oh my god, that would make if if I could have like my own customizable sounds. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, but I doubt it's customizable, do it. but I'm betting it's going to be something you choose. Damn from. it! Because if it was customizable, every time I kill somebody, you'd hear "bitch, I'm the goddamn raffle waffle." <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, I, I just want mine to go wah 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 wah, wah, wah. <laughs> that would set be up good. a bunch of them to play Flight of the Valkyries hell <laughs> you can you can only put like a 10 second clip in but if you equip all of your warhorns to one mech you can play like an 80 second clip <laughs> that would be awesome <laughs> so yeah pretty standard stuff then we've also got the the little phase markers for rewards uh, you know, pretty standard, same stuff as the Phoenix package. When do you guys think the uh, clan reinforcement pack is going to come out? What? I'm um, not guesstimating a on that month one. month after? With a Hellbringer and a Mad Dog? No, it's going to be four mechs, judging by the size. So it'll be a light, a medium, a heavy, and an assault. But yeah. Well, no, I was thinking like they did with the, reinfor the Saber reinforcement package, which was two mechs. Right, but the Phoenix package was only four mechs, so... Yeah, and it's twice as big here. Exactly, so it's going to be four. The price will be twice as big. Or so we think. They'll probably announce it like two months before um, all the other clan mechs come out or something. Mm -hmm. I don't. They're going to give it some time, just like they gave these times. Yeah. God, that you know, Dire Wolf does look good, though. I... That like if you look at that first reward, it's thirty days premium time. Mm -hmm. I, I just I still don't agree with this cutoff that they made by buying all of them, and it caps at ninety. Yeah, that's that's probably the most 
uh, it just it doesn't It should match. go nothing, it nothing, 30-30, 60 well, at least they could have done it better. They could have gone nothing, nothing, 30-30, 60-60, 90-90, or they could have done nothing, 30, you know, just get like a fucking year of premium time if you buy the yeah, Mastercari pack. Yeah, I think that, that would be a huge incentive to buying that. I thought, you know, the cap at 90 is the issue there. It's So max you get 120 if you buy them in February. Mm-hmm. So UI 2.0 is all that it would take to convince you, basically, and you probably should wait for a lot more than that. Here's the thing, though. I I am willing to bet when they it, when and well, I'm I'm being an optimist. When they make the UI 2.0 deadline on Tuesday, they will get a huge spike in sales. That being said, I feel like people think UI 2.0 is this, like, magic solve that's going to fix everything. It's just a... Well, that's how they've sold it. No! Yeah. That's well, how the community has here. sold it. That's how the community has sold it. They've just been like, No, they've, they've sold it with, uh, this is our stopgap, we need to get this done before we can do anything else. This well, it is, because yeah, they... That's it, the way they've done it. But nothing it new is, is going to come gap. out with UI 2.0. Like, it, it's not like the UI is going to come out and everything's going to suddenly fucking work. It's just that they need UI 2.0 before they can release bigger features like Community Warfare. Well, they wouldn't want to build it twice, so it's... You know, Raffle, if you're having realistic expectations, you must be a white knight. Oh, obviously. Clearly. <laughs> I fucking... I... <sighs> clearly, you do not <laughs> praise their business decisions. Raffle, that sigh. No, it's okay. I'm used to it. Happens a lot. Sir. CGI is the reason Raffle wears his hair upside down. It's true, man. <laughs> <laughs> I have I, the weight of carrying the community on my head pushed it all out the bottom. Um, I'm excited. I'm actually I'm gonna be out of town when the fucking patch comes out, so I'm really disappointed because I'm gonna get back and have to. I've been like four days behind. Hopefully. On a side note, somebody asked me tonight why I wasn't casting the SWK SJR game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why weren't you? Yeah, yes, Siri, why weren't you? Way to let us all down. Fuck playing the game. <laughs> That's how I felt last night, to be fair. We got. Oh, you mean the Arhad match? Yeah, we get we get done casting, and it like my team is streaming, and I'm like, well, I guess I'll just sit here and watch. That would have been great, though. Siri was like, put it on! Bring the screen back up! <laughs> that would have been fun. Uh, okay, um... Do you guys want to talk about what we think the new mech's going to be? Bye, starter! Okay, let's start no. with the wolfhound. I want oh, the why do you gotta ruin it? <laughs> so we have to talk I... about how it's not the wolfhound? <laughs> so we have to I'll talk about this. the wolfhound. <clears throat> I love the wolfhound. It's an awesome mech, but in the game we're playing right now... A uh, not so awesome mech. I don't know. It would be, I think it would be a great counter to the Jenner because they're both laser boats. One's yeah. humanoid shaped like a you know like a shadow hawk, and the others, it's hunched over mini mech that likes to hunt lights. Well, isn't the Wolfhound not jump jet capable? Just really quick, yes, just so is. everybody knows, the reason it's not the Panther because that's the one other option is that they specifically were like it's not the Panther. Russ said that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's like, it's not the Panther. And then Jaeger was like, is it the Firestarter? And he was like, uh... Anyway, so... <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about how it might be the Wolfhound, and then we're gonna talk about how it's probably the Firestarter. It'd make me sad. Um, I like the Wolfhound. I do too. I think it's, it's definitely an interesting mech. I, so, for those of you that don't keep up on everything uh the information drop on it was it's a 35 ton humanoid light mech uh controversial i don't know why it's controversial but it's probably because the fire starter has ecm but we're talking about the with wolf jump hunt. jets we're talking about with the jump jets and, You've got that and, bit. and lots of energy hard points this is like oh. a trifecta of some kind i <laughs> but guys we're talking about the wolfhound remember <laughs> well the cynical the approach to why it's the cynical approach to why it would be controversial is because it just invalidates every other light mech existing. Unless the hitbox is shit. Well, it's going to be called the Firestarter, and Planet's it's going to have flamers, and flamers are garbage, so that's also why it might be controversial. Yep. Yes, yeah, because we have to keep that stock loadout. Yeah. They're starting out the clan implementation. <laughs> have to keep the flamers. Has to be flamers. Okay, so did you guys see that video? Somewhere there's a video, a guy did a test 
flamers generate heat in your mech based around how much damage they're doing. Nope, that was wrong. The t um, if you actually pay attention, it generates heat before it hits the enemy. It was just he had so many heat sinks, and it's on an exponential curve the longer you hold it, that it was coincidentally starting the curve when he hit the enemy mech, oh. or right around the time. Oh. Yes. You're just pissing in everybody's cereal. No, I mean, that's good to know. Though. That's, I mean, that's like really said, good to know, because I... The more heat sinks you have, the I, longer it takes the heat to take over, basically. I didn't fucking know how, like, the flamers were. When was the last time you ran a fucking flamer, man? Fun drop. Good yep, point. a couple days ago. Good point. My intro does have, like, you know, 12 flamer spiders just running around, so I should probably... My, uh, my locust with one flamer. And one double AMS, of course. Yep. Okay, so Wolfhound is a pure energy boat. Um, yes. No jump jet capable. I thought it did have a very oh, no. jump. Does it? Uh, closer, it doesn't I didn't think anything. it did. Nope, no jump jets oh. on the Wolfhound. Okay. That's the big thing. The, it does, however, have a custom variant, which could be the Hero Mech. Uh, they stated that the Hero Mech is coming out on Tuesday. Uh with MC the week to follow, and then Seabolt purchases the week after that. So that there is a, a custom variant personal uh, personal mech of Gunnar yeah. Allard, etc., etc. Yeah. Um, can we now talk about the reasons why it's not the Wolfhound? Of course. No. Why don't we start with that? How many how many variants were made past thirty fifty? <laughs> I don't actually know. Oh my god. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. I think they're 30... I think this one is 3052. 30, yeah. Uh, I think there's uh, 10 after there's a one. The first one was 3028. Yeah, that there's like one or two maybe before 3050, so... Well, there's three, but uh, one of them, the Ooh. only difference is it drops a medium laser, and another one, the only difference is it puts the me rear-firing medium lasers on the front. So. Maybe that's why it's controversial. It's a rear fire. <laughs> yep, it's got butt lasers. <laughs> Dude, damn it. that would be awesome. If I had rear firing medium lasers, I would just run into the middle of the enemy, jump, and do 360s. Best strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Disco ball. Whirlwind. Siri used whirlwind. It's super effective. Actually, having a permanent picture in picture where it shows your rear arc would be nice. Oh my god. They could I would put it love. On, they could put it on one of the monitors. You mean but, auto oh detect those signals? Tech Technology is not to the point where a vehicle can have a camera in the back that shows it's just not possible. It's lost tech, oh, wait. Dude. It doesn't exist. Lost oh, wait. technology. Wait, we have that. Dude, it's lost tech. Dude, no, I don't know what you're talking about. There aren't, there aren't cameras in MechWarrior? What are you talking about? That's why we have giant plates of glass in front of it. Like, this shit's meant to be cool, not realistic. Come on. <laughs> Look at Han Solo giving us the tweet. Oh? Oh. Oh, cool. That's actually like... that's really good to know. God, Han, you're the best. Um. Okay. So, so if we're assuming it's not the Wolfhound, then it's the Firestarter. Ah, which is actually really cool. just just suppose it's the Firestarter. Jump jets. There's an ECM variant. Oh. Isn't doesn't the ECM well, variant? Yeah, yeah. The ECM variant is ridiculous. It's gonna be like the Jenner and the Raven rolled into one in one happy little ball. Oh, I'm excited. And oh. it has double AMS. I'm rocking the yeah. shell yeah. right now for that. I'm okay with the Jenner being obsolete because I'm getting real tired of playing it every match. <laughs> Dude, that's I think how Hush, every say, light peelit feel. <laughs> every uh, light peelit. Peelit. Wow, Jesus. However, I had a huge, I had a 20 minute presentation today for my entrepreneurship class, and I basically got done, I sat down in my chair and I was like, well, I have no energy today, so I'm, I'm kind of out of it tonight, I'll apologize. Um, so yeah, the fire starter, six energy, two ballistic slots. So, oh, that could be so dude. brutal. God, that could be brutal. For that H model, uh, and... And then the the S models are the ones that have the ECM and AMS, I think. Uh, 
They're both before 3050, and there's, I think, one more before 3050. The sure. uh, Firestarter 9S is an overhauled version of the 9H introduced in 3049. Structure has been replaced with endo steel. Weapons carried are four flamers, two medium lasers, a single small laser, an AMS with one ton of ammo to break against missiles, and a Beagle Active Probe. And then the S1 is exactly the same, except for it carries a Cardian ECM instead of a BAP. So, so it's a 7 things. energy hard point light mech with jump jets Humanoid. and ECM. Double generous? That's, oh. No. <laughs> yes. That's brutal. Well, it's uh, going to be hot. amazing. And Okay, so this isn't we're not even taking into account yet the fact that if it's like a humanoid and resembles uh, the fire starter as it was on, you know, it's going to be like Sarna. a spider and those fucking armpits, yeah. you're going to lose <laughs> shots in those armpits all day. You'll also have left to right arm movement, unlike a Jenner. Oh. So, controversial. It's torso twist will probably not be as good, though. It doesn't matter, man. <laughs> like, don't care. What, what's max there speed? Are. There are like five variants of the fire starter, so there's Stan a good chance they won't include the two latest ones. I doubt it would be controversial if it wasn't a Jenner killer. Well, come on. How? When was the last time they introduced an ECM mech? The cicada. The fucking spider. The spider. Yep. There we go. I forgot. And that about was the mech. like a year ago. Uh, with a standard 210 engine, it does 97. So going by that, it'll be able to mount like a probably a 240, like the Commando, maybe higher. I doubt it'll go all the way up to a 300. So it'll be slower than the the Jenner, but still. That's a good call. They they're probably gonna it'll... cap the engine as as a uh, I don't know. Maybe they they'll leave one variant without an engine cap, like the uh, the ballistic one, for example. You might you might just like be able to run at 171 or something, who knows. Still, even if it can only run like 130, 135 after speed tweak, it'll murder anything it gets its scrubby little hands on. Yeah, I mean, that, that base engine, though, is the same as a Raven, so it'll probably get to 295 if it, you know, keeps to the formula. Yeah. That's still so Which is amazing! They're gonna have to, they gotta put it in realistically, though. I... Maybe I'm being optimistic here, but I... Well, you know, looking back, they just introduced a medium that pretty much almost made every other medium obsolete, the Shadowhawk, so maybe... PGI balancing between mechs doesn't have much faith for me, so I'm excited it's going to be overpowered and awesome, and I'm going to buy it and be happy. Hi, I like how you talked yourself out of the optimistic stance. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to be realistic there. I just realized, you know, what they did with uh, the shadow. <laughs> well, and so and the Highlander. <laughs> there was a post about this on our true. forums a couple days ago. That was something along the lines of, like, what we can do to balance the jump sniping meta. And the thing is, is there will always be something that is overpowered. No matter what we do, no matter how well the game is balanced, there will always be a most effective strat and a most effective build. That if you're running a completely unrestricted composition, that will always be what that will take. Yeah, right. What is there a first-person shooter based on a turn-based strategy game? So. Right. Oh, There's I, no I, hope to balance. Yeah, well, so I'm I'm going off of StarCraft as my like place to draw information from. Even when the game is as close to balance as it possibly is, there are still strategies are that win more often than others, and there are still things that are better than others. So, without a doubt, yes, but there are more than one strategy and one style. I agree. Uh, in StarCraft, like each race, like given the matchups, one might be dominant. For example, like Bio Widowmine, Terran versus Zerg, or in Mutalang, etc. But mm -hmm. there are you can pull off alternatives, whereas right now it's do the one and if you don't have restrictions, it's probably just going to be jump sniping. Not necessarily, oh. though. I'm not sure if it's better than the jump sniping, and I'm actually pretty sure it's not, but we have been having some fun with brawling lately in credit. Is anybody... Why are there LRMs everywhere when I play just in the queue now? When did that happen? In pugs, you mean? Yeah. 
It's always been like, that way. Always. No, no, I'm talking like two to three dedicated LRM boats per match on either side. When pugs realized they couldn't aim. Yeah. Yeah. We went up the UO brackets. Oh, that's, that's that was what I thought it was. There we go. Trent's got me. So many lerms. Trent's trying to find a nice to be like, Crawford, you're just bad, that's why. Um, <laughs> so, wait, uh, but in all seriously, seriousness, what do you guys think about this fire starter, regardless of whether or not we get the ECM variant? I'm excited for a light that doesn't have a uh, ridiculous 20% speed. Oh, God, the oxide just pissed me off. So PGI doing something for nice for lights makes me happy. Well, haven't they talked about that they're going to revamp the oxide because... They think it's terrible right now, because it is terrible, and they should have because known. Because sales were bad, <laughs> the first thing they should right. feel bad. Well, I mean, they advertised like parts of the mech that were kind of important, you know, and basically advertised and saying that they didn't have these important things like uh, the Max engine or jump jets, which is pretty big for a Jenner. So, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily like needs a buff. It's just too much of a specific tool mm -hmm. to fit their... to actually be, like, a viable sales item for them. If it had jump jets... Then it would possibly be too much. You really but think giving I it... I think we've been over this. You think giving it jump jets would be too much? Actually, playing, that's a good point. Playing tonight, the Jenner D... <laughs> w like, Jenner D versus Jenner F... The Jenner F used to have a chance because it could keep range and kite using the jump jets against the streaks. Mm -hmm. And if you have jump jets in chase, then it's much harder to get away. Like, that that's why, like, Commando 2D, it actually kills my Jenner if I'm dumb enough to let it stay on me. Mm -hmm. But with the jump jets, I can keep range from it. And if you change that out for streaks, it's going to be super hard to get away. And I don't... I. Yeah, I don't think that's healthy. Okay, I just what about how limited it is in taking out anything without, you know, taking out anything bigger? I mean, like we were just discussing, there are counters to like every playstyle, and the counter to the oxide is that you can you keep keep away from it with jump jets. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a good point. I think if it's the fire starter, let's just start by saying that because we're not technically positive. Um, if <laughs> I would be excited. I don't think that there's a mech quite like the Firestarter right now. The thing it does strike for me is that it totally defeats the spider. Like, it, it just has more weapons. It's, it'll be bigger. Uh, it's true. It'll be slower, too. Yeah, that's a good one. Ish. Point. So, Maybe uh, it'll hopefully have those spider hitboxes. Well, I mean, on. well, I mean, while we're talking about light content, uh, have you guys noticed the the increased number of locusts in Twelve Mans? No. Why? No, nope. I have. I have. Just, but, just just once, just once, fucking go along with me, guys. Just once, be like, <laughs> I've seen it. guys, let's I don't know. let's I'm, fucking I'm, get everybody watching the show. Be like, yeah, there are tons of locusts in uh, Twelve Mans. I've seen support. like three today. So okay, that's... maybe if you talk about pug matches, sure. Well, yeah, I'm not talking about actual matches. I'm talking about if somebody brings a locust in an actual match, they get team killed. They get laughed. They get team killed. <laughs> Unless they're bringing like four locusts to bring max, or they're bringing a bunch of locusts to stack Highlanders at a low weight drop. I don't know. Even even then, I mean. That was sarcasm. I'm not actually going to support that. <laughs> If you know all your opponents are going to be LRM boats, it might be the way to go. Um, Double A mess on every single mech. Well, it's interesting, at least, even if it's not good. <laughs> oh yeah, the uh, they released that that post about the advanced AMS and stuff. Oh, That'd shit! Be... That's what, that was and the other the, thing uh, I wanted to talk about. Yeah. The AMS targeting module that tells you where in, where the distance is and where it's coming from. It's on the Reddit, vector. I think. It tells you from the vector. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, so tier tier 1 weapon modules. Equipped as a pilot module, can be unlocked through the pilot tree. Modules can uh, mutate any statistic the weapons have. As for balancing, which is up to military council, blah, 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 blah. visual changes for the weapons, um, 
there will be a penalty to any increase. Excuse me. What do you guys think about this? I'd be interested to see what they mean by mutate. I mean, I get the basic concept, but knowing PGI, there's a lot more behind that kind of language. The, yeah, the, well, so the example they gave was, like, you could increase the range of a medium laser by, like, up to 10 meters or something like that with an increased penalty of, like, an additional one heat, I think. That would still be garbage. I should find... There was a post about it somewhere. If anybody can find that post where they, like, detailed how that was going to work, that'd be great. Um. But, um... Yeah, so what do you guys think about the ability to kind of change some of the stats of weapons? Uh, the way they suggested it, because I saw it, it... I mean... It's minor to the most extent, but it's a cool idea, I guess. It's it's something. It adds something. It adds, more importantly for new people, it adds a leveling sort of experience, which is needed. I mean, as much as I'm not a fan of it, having played this for a while, though, a lot of the draw for like Call of Duty games and stuff is the leveling up and the things like that. Well, Sace, can I ask you something? How, have you tried leveling without converting to GXP? Uh, do I look like a peasant? No. Exactly. Oh, so that's what I've so been I'm, doing this week. I guess, I guess I'm a peasant. You so are I'm, a peasant. I'm concerned about the rate of acquisition for people who aren't willing to pay to convert to GXB. Uh, 5% is really, really, really slow. I think I have something ridiculous like 30,000 GXP right now. I have over 100,000. Yeah. What the fuck, Trent? 110,000. Aren't you the guy who has like 100 million yeah, sea bills too? Yeah, hundred and yeah, hundred million or so. Post you were We've talking got... about the breakdown. Oh god, I love you, Queen Blade. But I mean I eleted or I start tried an alt account last night. I went through uh many matches, I can't remember how many. Got the basics for my hunchback, had like seventeen thousand XP on the cic trial cicada, which I was using to get the money for the hunchback. And I walked out with like five hours of play and twelve hundred GXP, and that's not even ten percent of what you need for like seismic or one of the module upgrades. And yeah. all of those become like re re requisite in order to do competition play. So I think it's just, and if you add all these other ones in on top, I'm concerned it's going to be another gate to entry, and we don't need those. That's always been a, a pretty sensitive topic, the uh, the viability of the free-to-play portion of the game, along with uh, how long it takes to acquire these things. And, and you know, back when they adjusted the Seville um, income, it, it they had a justifiable reason. They said uh, the, the prices were going to change for things depending on community warfare, but, I mean, changing that system that they had in place previously up until that point was probably a bad move because now you have this big gap where people are just making less overall. And you know, the people who have the most are the ones who are paying for premium time and converting to GXP. They aren't people who have been grinding and grinding for a long time. It's it's more so that they're willing to spend the money and play the game a lot. So those are the people they're targeting when it's affecting most of the people who are trying to actually grind in the game. Ah, uh, just really quick, I finally found that article. Um, so it'd be a five-tier system, the when they detailed it, back when they did the player levels and modules update. Uh, this was in December, December 20th. Uh, five-tier system, 2,000 XP, 3,000 XP, 5,000, 6,500, 8,500 for each one. Uh, increased by three meters, three meters, four meters, four meters, and five meters. So that would be a total of 19 meters at an increase of... One heat, thirty, fifty at point at increase of point seven heat on a medium laser. That's as a Jenner, I'll take the half second to go the nineteen meters and fire my lasers. Then, well, so yeah. that's but say you can say you can mutate damage. That might be worth it. That might be worth it. Like. Or say you can mutate damage on a fucking AC twenty, you know, like that. I'd be having mutating burn time on my lasers. Uh, oh, like decreasing it or increasing it? Yeah, 
stack that damage into a shorter burn time. That's interesting. I didn't think about that. I, I, I wonder if it'll be that customizable if you'll have... I doubt it. If you well, could increase the fucking projectile speed of an AC-20? I'm sure, just like every other module we've had, and we, we've seen this with Artie and Air, um, they're, they're probably going to edit the values and adjust things over time. I think they even say that in the post. Um, this so module can manipulate I, any statistic the weapons have. Man, that's pretty interesting. They're going to need to find a counter st counterbalance statistic for each of the statistics they modify, though. Otherwise, oh, I mean, I'm sure there'll be there'll be heat or something like that, but still, that yeah, it, it's cool in like... that it does give you the ability to tailor your build even more to your playstyle. Which, well, well, you know, the worst thing they could do is if they do a module that reduces the ghost heat penalty. I'm not too concerned about that. Yeah, I'm more concerned I know, about I know you want to get rid of it entirely. <laughs> yeah, I no. really like... I think PPCs are hot enough right now, it doesn't really matter. No, I mean, like, what concerns me more is if they have, like, because how much, like, what aspects are they going to be tweaking? Do we trust them to put in ones that are balanced? Because, for example, say you had one that treated, say, 20 meters range on your medium lasers, cuts it to 250, but then reduces the heat by like five to ten percent. I I think that would actually be a no-brainer to take. So, I'm sorry. Uh, like there are just some weird, because there isn't necessarily a one-to-one -one power value for certain aspects of certain weapons, and if they don't know which ones are equivalent in worth and trade-off, then you could have some just again, it becomes sort of a gate in that the people who have it are going to be performing much, much better than the people who don't. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see what statistics you can actually manipulate. I mean, the extreme example would be, hey, we're going to give you uh, half a second better rate of, rate of fire on your Goss. The trade-off is that you generate 200% heat. <laughs> and... Uh... I mean, it's the, obviously those are the extreme cynical yeah. examples, but no matter what they do, there are going to be some that may, may be just <laughs> better than others. And if there are none like that, then this is just an entirely pointless addition. So yeah. it'll be well. We get them. We get them on Tuesday, so this is not like we don't have to wait very long to find out about these. We'll get them. Get to see how they work then. One thing to note, what they've said is that the higher tiers of the weapon modules are going to be tuned or required to be unlocked through having a higher pilot level, which is like an overall global thing, I think. They haven't really announced details, but that means that um, there it's only, like I think, the first two or three levels are going to be available on Tuesday of each module. Well, let's let's, let's just say it's, it's a substantial level, then we have to add in... Pilot levels, a ton, tonnage, and ELO. Mm -hmm. And then we have another gated performance improve, improvement. It sounds like this is, to rain on parades. It sounds like this is part of the pilot tree redesign, where you'd actually be. Uh, so you'd have to tailor your mech. You'd have to like, there's actually there would actually be like a tree that you'd pick that you'd go through, and pick different. Like, okay, this Jenner is going to be for brawling, or, you know, s this Highlander is going to be for sniping, and you have to pick certain modules that you could then equip to your mech, which would be interesting. It would really uh, diversify roles, and that might put an end to sort of the jack-of-all-trades thing that we have going on right now. Um, I, I don't think it'll be that big of a change, though. It's interesting. I'm excited to see how it's implemented. You know, more features are more features. I don't really care. I, I'm just worried about them not adjusting things if something becomes a huge part of the meta, for example, or it's obviously too overpowered, like um, who uses hill climb, for example, and are they ever going to adjust that so it's useful, or the... Well, so, that this is how we felt about Air Arty, though. Like, everybody's like, well, Air Arty is such trash for, like, the first three months that it was out, and then they buffed Air Arty, and now everybody uses it. Wait, I'm sorry, Rafa, was that a point in support of them, or...? 
I mean, it, it was a point. Arty. It was a point that they do eventually get around to changing stuff. Not necessarily that it's in a timely fashion, and in the case of Irardi, it was a huge over. It was a huge overstep, especially for the competitive community. But like things do get noticed. Well, how long has it actually been since that Irardi change? That's what I'm saying. Oh, it was like episode nine or something like that. So two months, a couple months, plus Christmas. And how long have we known it's been broken? Nobody fucking listened to me the first episode. They're like, nah, Raffle, cool cooldown on Artie is like uh, like seven minutes. It's going to be total trash. I was like, guys, I'm pretty sure it's like five seconds. You're like, no, no, I'm pretty sure it's like a minute. <laughs> it, it's like NARC. Nobody it's it's really it, so bad. Nobody Nobody's going to use it. Even with the damage increase, I was like, guys, it's 400%, and I'm, I'm positive it's like an eight-second cooldown. God, nobody fucking listened Let's be listens honest. If, if they got rid of headshots with Artie, I'd be happy with them. I like. I, I think they stop a lot of the uh, stagnant things, and I like them. It, it does prevent camping, which I do really enjoy. But the headshots are kind of bullshit. Well, I think they gotta find the balance where you know, I it does prevent camp uh, camping. But I think if they doubled the the time, and that's maybe it, doubled the cooldown time. Maybe if they want to remove headshots, sure. But um, oh, Siller, they, we can't talk about SRMs in here. <laughs> what? SRM oh, somebody mentioned fun. SRMs in the chat, and I'm pretty sure if I mention SRM hit detection again on War Room, Raffle's gonna shank me. User was banned from the server. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree. I think 30 damage per shell, no headshots, would be fine. Because right now, the, the amount to which two random direct hits can completely destroy an entire side of your mech, or sometimes both of your legs, is kind of ridiculous. I liked it when Matt Newman came in and we were discussing that with him, and he's like, it's your head component, it's on the top of the mech, and then it was just like, Jaeger mech, awesome, and he's just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the most ridiculous case of, so I think the airstrike does actually come in on an angle, because I got one I dropped on fucking skirmish in a twelve man and I like I had whoever was leading the group hadn't taken it off any or some shit and I was like, okay, this is dumb. Everybody get into the the hangar on River City. Just hide. Wait for them to come to us. I'm done with this. I hate skirmish. And somebody dropped an airstrike and it fucking went through like the entire bottom of the hangar and I was like what the fuck is going on? Like, that goes through the ceiling? And it took me for Like, I couldn't figure it out. I didn't know if it was a bug or, like, what the hell was going on. But it, I've actually seen shots glitch through and hit, like, down below sections. Yeah. Like, on um, HPG Manifold, you know that structure up top mm -hmm. that you can hide under? Yep. I actually had shots, like, land under, like, hit people in that. That's, that's and crazy. I was I was very confused. Bunker Buster ammunition. Easy. <laughs> Gee, that was you guys. That's what we need. We need some we need some inferno rounds. Oh. Um, okay, so other than the tier one weapon module, we have uh, they announced that they're going to do chaff, pretty much ahead of schedule in the timeline. Potentially. I, lerms, lerms just don't need to be. I mean. They annoy the crap out of me, but they don't need to be pooped on anymore. The so thing, just so, the wrong thing. Well, clan tech. Mm, okay. <laughs> if LRM clan LRM clan LRM twenties are going to clan be a thing. Street twenties, you mean? <laughs> yeah. Wait, we st we still got five months for this though. When are these coming out? <laughs> Well, no, that's nerf jump jets. This is this then is coming these changes out. might be necessary. If you nerf, oh yeah, I don't know. I just thought it was interesting that they had talked about it. I like the concept. I read it and I didn't instantly remember it from BattleTech. So I was like, that sounds so fucking cheesy. Hold on, and I like had to go on Sarna and like check and be like, oh okay, that's actually real. It's not just some ridiculous thing they made up. <laughs> actually, Siri made a good point. I I'll pose this question: to you. If they nerf jump jets, would that destroy the current meta? Yes. Because yes. I'm if looking they... at... Siri, I spent way too much time SRMs. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up, Sace. Drops. Oh, god damn it, it needs to happen! Well, no, Sace makes a good point, though. Like, because you, you do need the weapon side 
to help Nada, the weapons need to be adjusted, and you also need the jump sniping mm -hmm. side of the Meta to be adjusted. You need both for this to work. So, it because it takes so really quick, this this does bear, uh, this is kind of a short episode anyway, so we will talk about this. Uh, this does bear mentioning Siri's idea for getting rid of the jump sniping meta, which I completely agree with, is have jump down, uh, jump jet cooldown be based on a formula between number of jump jets and mech weight. So it would affect light mechs less than assault mechs, but assault mechs with only one jump jet, like most current Highlander uh, jump sniping builds do, would have close to a 30 to 40 second recharge time on their jump jets. So this would uh, make jump sniping very slow, and while you'd be allowed to do it, you would then be fairly handicapped in your movement for a significant time afterwards, whereas lighter mechs would still be fairly unaffected. Siri, did I, did I sum that up pretty well? Uh, part of what I mentioned was also a 50% increase in capacity for Trump Jets. Ah, there we go. Thank um, you. But uh, obviously the numbers on the recharge were just to illustrate the point. Um, of making it like 30 seconds. It could have. It could be 2025. 2025 during a battle, that's still ages. Like, But if you look at how fast it goes right now, I, I swear it's like five, six seconds. You have your entire tank back. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree. I think that would work. And so, should, like, if a change like that were to be made and SRMs were to be fixed, I think that, yeah, I think the entire game would be different. You'd, you'd be seeing a lot of completely different matches. Probably more brawlers. I mean, think of all the variants that are based around SRM builds. It's like all these things would start coming out of the woodwork. It's it's kind of actually a whole side of the game that just doesn't. I haven't seen it. Not yeah, relevant. You haven't seen it. Ages. It's a weight effective weapon that makes mediums more viable more than an AC twenty boat. I do think I miss sense. Or the community in general might be underestimating brawling and SRMs just a little bit. One of the things I've noticed is just because your targeting reticle doesn't flash red, doesn't mean that you didn't do a buttload of damage. So the thing, the thing I've noticed is that sometimes they all hit. I, I actually tried it today. I ran a fucking Griffin. I can't believe I was touching that mech, but I ran a Griffin with three SRM sixes with Artemis. And the closer I got, the better it worked. So if I was right up against a mech and I shot all of my SRMs and they all hit him right in the fucking CT, that bitch died, and he died fast. But at any distance, I felt like the hit detection was not very good and it wasn't doing damage. That's true, yeah. So. But short range, so. Yeah. No, I mean, I... They... They can be used, but they're just not reliable enough to be used in the competitive side of the game, which is what sucks. Yeah, and there's two there's two issues with that, and we all have to remember that uh, the faster the projectile, the the higher probability it has to register. I would assume the slower, the more, the lower probability because you know it takes a longer time to travel. So SRMs have a slower projectile speed. Um, and on top of that, in any competitive match or any video game, if you have a ping difference of 100 or 120 with someone else, it's going to be noticeable in some way. So on, you have that projectile speed and the ping difference that are that are in play there, and it just makes the SRMs a, a tough weapon to to tune correctly. I, yeah. I don't see why SRMs are any different than LRMs in hit detection. Can someone explain that to me from a technical standpoint? I think it's just the, the speed at which things travel allows for a greater desync between where you think they are and where they would be. LRMs go like less than half the speed of SRMs though. Yeah, but they're tracking. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what you see on the server side, they're actually correcting for it. Um, like for example when the AC-20 was slowed down, people started reporting more hit reg issues with it. Hmm. I hadn't actually noticed anything with AC-20. Uh, I'll have to actually do some testing about that. Um... So let's be honest, if they, if they fix jump jets but don't fix some of the brawl weapons, it's going to be a direct damage, like it's going to be direct pinpoint damage just without the annoying hill humping. 
It'll just be miseries everywhere. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you're gonna have hill hopping, and if they buff that oh, yeah. climb module, oh, there you Dockers. go. You Stalkers for days. <laughs> it just, it, it, not a better fix. It's just, you need to balance out and fix some things, and it's it's gonna take some time. Honestly, though, you would see you would see a change, though, because as good as stalkers are, they are really, really, really immobile. So. And if SRMs were buffed, then a medium getting on a stalker is a death sentence. It can't brawl for shit. And uh, SRMs tear it that. apart because of the huge... Um, like It's a barn, so... Um, like, when the PPC stalker was dominant, it, SRMs had already been nerfed, and they hadn't really been used before that, because, like I said, SRMs tore them apart. Yeah, the stalker. The stalker was the first high alpha mech, if I remember correctly. It was it, that, you know, you can put a lot of SRM sixes and lasers in there. That's a pretty deadly mech too. Well, and you can put <laughs> six PPCs in it. <laughs> yeah. But if if SRMs did get buffed, stalker five M has five missile hard points, and ghost heat can suck it. Well, my atlas has. 123 points of armor on the front CT, so can suck it all day. <laughs> Two shots and that's all gone. Yeah, I suppose. I have to say, there is nothing better than taking all of the armor off the back of your Atlas, walking at an AC-40 mech, and just watching like the sheer panic <laughs> when he shoots you in the chest and nothing happens. Your armor just turns yellow and he's like, <gasps> and just runs away. <laughs> I kind of miss the Atlas Brawler. I used to always give people crap. I'm like, I don't really see what's so scary about an Atlas. You know, it's so slow and everything else. And then I tunned up and an Atlas came around a corner and I'm like, and there's that fear. <laughs> yeah, when you when you can't get away, they're scary. They're, they've they always been my favorite mech. Back in the glowing eyes days. Oh, they... <laughs> let me tell you, they were scary back in 8-mans. Back when... Fuck it. You want to you talk about really when they were scary? Back when R&R &R was a thing, and you were like, holy god, that person is literally losing money to run that mech. Run away! See, I don't I, I don't get it, because I never lost money back then. Oh, no, even I with not. full r, &R. I didn't either. It, it was... Especially if you were running premium time... What? Did I just get messaged? What the fuck? But, like, without premium time, the earnings were good enough that... Yeah, without premium time... If you time, could consistently put in good games, you made money. As long as you weren't, like touching Terrible. singular mech and then dying, you were making decent money. Unless you were running, like, an XL light every time. And, like, lights, have to lights were the worst for that. Right yeah, that's true. Using the gauze rifle back or, then was like, that was just a thousand sea bells I wasted on that stupid shot. Yeah. Oh, no. I, man, I liked that mechanic. I wish they would bring that back. That was really fun. Community Warfare might bring it back. That's what I, I had wondered about that too. If like, depending on what faction you take, you get so like, uh, like pirate units have to pay R and R because they're not supported by a faction, but they get way higher earnings. Whereas faction units make just like standard pay per match, but they don't have to pay R and R stuff like that. That'd be cool. Well, there was something I saw now that they were saying now that they had skirmish game mode. People were asking that assault mode where uh, you would get more money now for capturing a base, or at least uh, kind of like similar how you get a resource bonus with uh, Conquest, that you would have sort of like a capture bonus in assault now to kind of distinguish it against skirmish mode. Yeah, that's... I don't play skirmish, honestly, so I don't really know. I know. But it's just, what's the difference between skirmish and assault right now? You can a make base. more money in assault because you can cap. No, you don't make more money by capping. You actually make less money by capping. Really? Yeah. yeah. This just, shows, this just shows how much I pay attention to how much money I... Like, I, I don't really care about the grind. I just play because I have fun playing the game. You know what was hilarious? I was playing a Spider 5v, spotting with one medium laser, one tag, and 12 jump jets. And I made more money than I do in like my Jenner getting like five, six hundred damage by getting like twenty five damage There's games tag tagging bonuses. all day. <laughs> that and putting up a putting up a UAV. If you put up a UAV, yeah. 
you basically make that money back instantly. Like, I made 180,000 C-Bills one game with, like, 50 damage. See, what you should do, Siri, now is, uh, take the 5D Spider with max jump jets with ECM and a tag, and put your ECM on counter, so you'll get all the counter ECM bonuses. Right, I already had that, though, because I had BAP. <laughs> now, something I... Something I wondered was, and I thought I noticed it before when I was playing my Raven 3L. I don't know if anyone else has tried this, but if you keep turning your counter ECM back to, you know, regular, and then you keep turning it off and on, do you keep getting that counter ECM bonus? Can you stack that? Oh because my God, do you? I think I've tried it, and oh. it worked. It worked once. I didn't. I never. <laughs> I don't I see never... why it wouldn't, considering you can do it to the the uh, the spot target bonus where. If you target the guy first and then he like gets out of the line of sight and you target him first again and missiles hit him, you get a you get another spot bonus. How to but game I mean, the system. Yeah, there's something broken about it, the economy when we can break it down and figure out how to like maximize profit off of it, and it's not just by doing what you should do and kill max. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I dropped into a game like a month ago, and the first thing comes up in chat wasn't like, you know, GG Close or any of the normal stuff. It was, I'm in a support raven. And my mind just was kind of was like, uh, what? Tag. Tag, narc. Bap, ECM. Tag, narc, bap, ECM. Air, arty. And all Damn of us. the, and all of the air, arty modules that make them do closer damage. With I an, really with want an, a UAV on that. With an ER large laser. Oh, sorry, sorry, there was a UAV. My bad. Uh, with uh, with an ER large laser. I I didn't know what to do. I was just kind of like... What? Just, I mean, it's, too it's good for roll you. warfare. You shoot them. That's what you do. We're, we're, we're supposed to have team. roll warfare, right? No, 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 no. It's class warfare. <laughs> <laughs> it's a completely different discussion. Hey now, hey now, hey now. <laughs> the dream is over. I like that. Um, a couple interesting bug fixes. PPCs will no longer do EMP damage to ECM systems below minimum range. UAV will no longer silly. implement target direction letter in certain situations. Uh, lock and lock decay times have now been corrected. They were off by a fraction of a second here or there. Nothing really big on those bug fixes. Um, those are coming out on the 4th. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we're all just kind of waiting for UI 2.0 on Tuesday and all the stuff that comes with that. Can we uh, put that PPC will no longer do EMP damage to ECM under 90 meters? Can we label that as a PPC nerf? Yeah, totally. <laughs> yes, because we were totally using our PPCs to spot for our LERMs. Yep. <laughs> LERMs are the weapon that will carry this game. Thank you very much. Um. Okay, so let's just uh, we've been going for a while, so let's do what are you guys most excited about for the February 4th patch? We'll just go around and ask everybody, starting with Queen Blade. Our Lord and Savior. That's what I'm excited for. Our Lord and Savior. I've been here the whole time, man. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so Queen Blade is excited about UI 2.0. What about you, Sace? I'm excited that they won't have another excuse to pop out. That sounds bad, but I want my community warfare. I want SRMs fixed. I want a lot of things. and I'm excited for the things that come after UI 2.0. I'm not really excited for UI 2.0. Mm -hmm. What about you, Heim? Um, the usual UI 2.0, the uh, uh, fire starter, uh, hero mech, and then um, I I didn't. This is kind of like an unintentional plug, but um, at Comstar NA, we're doing like an outreach HPG themed launch event party thing, and everyone's kind of invited. Uh, I think we're renaming the name of the server for the day to outreach, and then. Uh, Helmer's changing some icons to the Wolf Dragoons thing, ah. so it, you know, launch it, it kind of lines up with the lore. Uh, it's four mans and twelve mans and casual stuff, and we're going to be like advocating that people go and report bugs because the UI is probably 
not going to be perfect right when it comes out, so um, I'm pretty excited for that. That'll be cool. I'm looking forward to that, too. What about you, Trent? Fantech. That's that's coming out on the 4th? Oh, I wish. <laughs> of June? <laughs> 17. I'll just going to see if my fears are confirmed or done away with. Yep. How about you, G-Man? Well, if they actually come out with it, the weapon mods... I, it could be really interesting and yeah. fun to play around with. I agree, those could be really cool. What about you, Siri? This is going to be something I'm not expecting, I'm sure. I'm looking forward to the forum rage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all the people who didn't out. read up on the error expectations correctly. Yeah, no shit. I'm, I'm actually glad that I'm on vacation, because it just means I get to stay away for an entire day and like not look at it. I'm just going to update my game. I'll play a few rounds on my laptop, be really upset because I'm playing on my laptop, and then have a beer and go to bed. And yes, I'm looking forward to potentially a new good hero mech. Yeah, that's One that I fun. might actually buy, and a new set of things for me to min max. Wait, Man, isn't base the turrets iron? coming out also on what, Tuesday? Oh, sorry, what was that? Base turrets. Aren't those coming out on oh, Tuesday? Oh, shit! Oh, yeah. They totally yeah, fucking they are. are. Yeah, the base turrets with cocoon mode and all that good stuff. Oh god. AKA why the locust is even more useless. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be so yeah. much fun. Nerf locust nerf. Out uh, DPS'd by the turrets. Oh, they also on the topic of UI two point they were supposed to do another PTR before launch day. I Today think they did say yeah, they were supposed to do one more and they did not do that, so just pointed that out. Good uh, catch, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, they said they were going to have, I believe in the uh, NGNG100, he said they were going to have some of the features in there uh, that weren't in the previous PTR. Like, uh, I, I'm my... not sure what it was. Something, it can, something to convey heat scale better uh, to people, he said, he mentioned. So, I no PTR, no one knows exactly what's going to be in that launch patch. Makes more dings. One of God damn it! That's that you ruined my joke. I was gonna say <laughs> I'm looking forward to the button that turns off the UI 2.0 dings. Uh, one of the things that I might be wary about noticing about that is that they had problems recently with data mining and things like that. So they might not have done a public test because there might be a lot of information that they don't want made public yet. And if they feel like they've reached a decent state with the UI, they probably just wouldn't have because it's four days away. Five days away. So. Or they just didn't think the features were ready. That's also true. Siri, you're shaking you your head and giggling. What's up? Read what he typed. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. Not saying that on the show. Um, I, oh. No, I. I not it, that bad. <laughs> no, it's not. But I'm a nice person. Oh. Um, I think, anything else you guys want to talk about tonight? Otherwise, I think we're good. Um, Mech Collect updated their program so that when you, you, it takes an automatic screenshot of your end of round game now, so it automatically puts it in a folder, so every time you run Mech Collect, you'll now automatically get an end of game screenshot with the scoreboard taken. Ah. I thought that was pretty interesting. That's actually really awesome, and I might have to start using it. Anyone get to play with Lee Song's Mech Lab tool? That's oh, it's yeah, pretty that sweet. Was... Yep. I'm excited for all the... The community, I just have to say, the community is awesome. Doing everything for PGI? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, they really oh, wow. need like a, a community like, Hey, thanks guys. <laughs> well, they did, what, that one week when they were thanking people in the community for their involvement. And then they just kind of like dropped it. Like they actually like awarded them with like MC packages and stuff. I guess there might be a liability issue. Yeah, they don't want people feeling like they're not being recognized, etc. Because that would then, you know, lead to problems within the community. Um. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else I wanted to bring up. I don't think there is. Um, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, let's go around and do shoutouts.
starting with Queen Bee. Unless there's nothing else you guys want to talk about. Killer. Awesome. We can end. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get up for class at 8 tomorrow, so I'm not exactly upset. All right, Queen Blade. Shout outs. Uh, Nico Snow. May he have uh, good stuff in his future. Oh, that's right. He uh, he took off. Yeah. Good call. Good luck, Nico. All right, Sace. Uh, shout out to my boys at SIG. I really got not much to say this week. Uh, excited for the start of the uh, season three. Yeah, didn't lose any bets, so we don't have to completely humiliate you this time. And that's going to be brought up for the rest of my life. Well, it's going to be brought up until game. you win a bet, and since you're afraid to make <laughs> any of them, it's probably not going to happen. Oh, yeah, well, we'll make some more. Week, Perfect. Nope. Perfect. Nope. <laughs> not All right. the beard. It just came back. That's I hope you know, point. I had a lady ask me if I could cut off my finger instead. Do I, if I could get rid of a finger instead of shave my beard. You'd, you'd get rid of a finger over your beard? No, no, she was just asking for that because oh. she's the one that had to look at my face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's the screenshots for the boss SIG match tonight? Uh, somewhere? We Nobody lost. took them. I know. Makes me sad. We uh. By the way, on. Boss Sig is the best like quick there abbreviation for a game played ever. Uh, though we did vote, we've decided that since Sig doesn't really have a meeting, we've been voting. We are series groupies this month. Ah <gasps> uh, yes, fucking perfect. Um, it, it beat out single independent girls. Uh, I was hoping it was Siri. What was the really good one you had? Queen series Queen. groupies. No, you mean it was me? the, the other one. Oh, was it you? <laughs> Shitty in game. Shitty in game. Oh. <laughs> Next month. Um, Put it up. We'll vote. Perfect. All right, Heim. Shout outs. Uh, shout outs to the CTR team. Uh, it was fun playing in the Remnant in Invitational. Then to Blackstone Knights. You guys played extremely well. Uh, I was really impressed. Um, and then I just want to give a shout out to Jman Five for uh, going through the testing grounds recently and shooting at invisible walls and reporting them to PGI. So uh, you know, I wish I'm glad uh, he's going to do that. So if you see any changes, uh, give him a pat on the back. Killer. All right, Trent. Um, I have to do two. One goes to um, to Reddit and to Blackstone's new Templar group, the the Warden Company. Uh, who played the first comp match. Tough Battle came out ahead 3-2. So congrats to uh, Warden Company on their first comp match. And I also promised Doyle that I would plug the MRBC League because currently it's just Blackstone and Steel Jaguar uh, in the NA division. And I'm sure we, we enjoy playing the Jags, but it'd be nice to have at least somebody else in there to shoot at once in a while. I'm, I'm signing up a company, so don't worry. You'll uh, you'll have some, you'll have some uh, opponents in there. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, uh, sign up for MRBC. Super cool. Fun drop restrictions. Should be a fun time. All right, G-Man. Uh, shout out to those black, that new Blackstone Knights company that he was talking about, since we just played them. Fun games. And also to Merrick Civil War in general, because it's looking to be a very, very nice season. All right, and Serio Thrax of SGR Gaming. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm on too many of your shows, so I have to make sh like shout outs every single time. I know, right? And then everybody steals mine. I don't I know can't... why Doyle asked Trent instead of me, but. Uh... Oh, for the uh... interview? Yeah. Dude, I, I like those. I want him to do those with like a bunch of people. Or, no, I'm just like, why he asked Trent to plug it when I. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Anyways, um. Um. Oh god, why? <laughs> I guess... Actually, I don't think I've done this one, but shout-outs to Serious Table, uh, Homeless Bill, and FireEye for their work on the Outreach HPG um, subreddit. It's a pleasure working with them. Yeah, I agree. You guys have done a really, really good job with the subreddit. Uh, it's a pleasure being able to go on there and get legitimate feedback all the time um i guess that brings it to me uh shout out to everybody on the show as usual thanks for coming on thanks for talking thanks for uh putting up with all of the shenanigans that is 
dealing with me in one of my productions. Uh, thanks to everybody who came out and watched. Uh, so again, I will be gone next week, taking a week off, just kind of from everything. Gonna getting a little bit of burnout, just doing too much stuff lately. So taking a week away, gonna be out traveling, etc. But I will be back uh, after that full force. We'll probably do a special beginning of the week episode of War Room to talk about the UI and all the changes when I get back, as well as uh, Siri and I are going to attempt to cast the BSK SWK game, which is going to be sometime next week or next weekend. Uh, so yeah, look forward to both of those, uh, look for any announcements, and I will see you guys in about a week. Later. Peace. <laughs> Night. Until next time, mech fans. Good night. Good Sensors fight. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. <laughs>